the note? Mm-hmm. No, it's the the, um, the transformer or whatever. Oh. Right. Right, here we go. Hi, and welcome to the SEO podcast, Unknown Secrets of Internet Marketing. My name is Chris Burris, owner of eWebStyle. I am Charles Lewis, your internet marketing specialist. Welcome back to another fun-filled edition. This is podcast number 211. I think I tweeted earlier in the day we were trying to get up and running, and uh, we got sidetracked by some customers. Customers come first. Sorry about that. Uh, And when you become a customer, you'll appreciate it. Uh, (laughs) um, As always, there is a tip from our previous podcast, and our tip is, if you are not doing search engine visitor optimization, that's Cibo. also known as SIVO, thank you, then you are wasting your SEO efforts or at least reducing the value of your SEO efforts. I mean, at the end of the day, what you don't want to do is spend a lot of time and resources and efforts optimizing your website to get a great ranking, and then when people get to your site, they don't convert, right? Or they don't buy, they don't uh, request a quote, they don't call. Why don't they do that? Well, because your SIVO is lacking. So you need to make sure that your SIVO, your search engine visitor optimization is in place. Make that phone number prominent, right? Make that quote form um, accessible and uh, easy to complete. Don't give it all away. Don't redo podcast number 210. Go watch 210. <laughs> Go but listen. you want to make sure that, that your site is in a position that people can convert when they land on it. And um, that's what SIVO is all about. Yeah, so go back. If you want to know more about SIVO, we did cover that in podcast number 210. So go check that out. Please remember, we are your friendly local neighborhood top position snatchers, where our mantra is... Don't be a douche. Don't be a douche. If you can and you have a device that will allow you to, you should tweet now. What should they they tweet? Hashtag. I kind of missed my my thing right here. I used to do hashtag SEO podcast. Uh, This is number 211. Uh, Make sure you tag us in it. At eWiffStyle. At Bessie best SEO podcast, and um, that way we can tweet back and follow you and do all of our social networking stuff. Cool. If you like our podcast, if you get good information about our if you hate our podcast, do us a small favor. Although that's a little weird, right? Yeah, I hate the podcast. Let me do them a small favor. Well, I mean, bad reviews always. <laughs> they do happen. So. <laughs> they do happen. And I guess they think that they're doing a disservice. Yeah. Little do they know we take advantage of bad uh, bad reviews. You can do a couple of things. There's four things you can do, actually. The first one has only three steps. Go on to iTunes, create an account, and write a review. If you write a review, hopefully it's a five-star review, five go ahead stars. and send us an email, podcast at e com. The other thing that you can do for us, we really like it if you give us a review on our G Plus local page. Yes. In order to do that, we've made it much Excuse easier me. than it could be. Uh, all you have to do is go to e-webstyle.com slash G plus or slash G plus or slash Google plus or slash Google plus. All of those will take you to our Google plus G- local page where you can write a review. Again, if you choose to, you can hit us up with an email podcast at e-webstyle.com. We have a review tab on Facebook. I didn't check it today. I, didn't, I haven't checked it in a while. Maybe there's didn't a review. Check it last week. I didn't even <laughs> check it last week. Maybe there's a review there. Maybe you would be our first reviewer on our Facebook uh, review tab. Uh, and that's easy. Just go to facebook.com slash e-webstyle. We now have a Yelp account. I don't have a shortcut for getting you to our Yelp page yet. So go on to Yelp and search us and find us and then write a review for us and then also send us an email. Uh, podcast at e <laughs> Got you. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the entirety of ways to connect with us, Facebook.com slash e YouTube.com slash e Twitter.com slash e And of course, email podcast at e If you're interested in a free, we're going to get all of this out of the way really quick and our list is getting a little longer. So yeah, sorry, Gino. I know, um, right? <laughs> if you want a free website analysis, go to our website. Over on the right or prominently, you will find our website analysis request form. Fill out that website analysis request form and we will make contact with you and get a free Currently, it's on the right side, right? Currently, if you go yeah. to the site right now and probably the rest of this month and maybe even next month, it'll still be on the right side. Yep. Um, that redesign is almost done. We'll be launching soon. And then it'll be, there'll be an option for you to click on to get your analysis right there under the banner. So, so look forward to that. Do we have any algo cataclysm today? Um, no cataclysm no today. No cataclysm today. Uh, and remember, we do have a referral program. If you have an SEO client you want us to take care of, uh, you can send them our direction and we will remunerate you for that. That means that pay means you. get paid. Money. All right, a little bit of, actually, I've got a couple of tips before we get started. Uh, Terry Murphy, uh, Steve and I met with, uh, with Terry Murphy. Uh, by the way, announcement. 
We've got a new uh, director of business development. You're supposed to do a drum roll in, in, in the back of That almost deserves it. Ding, a ding, ding, whoop, whoop, yeah. whoop. Hey, you want to do an algo cat? We can do a cow. <laughs> Is that pretty good? <laughs> yeah, I think you nailed it right there. <laughs> <laughs> Director of Business Development, uh, uh, Steve Briskman. He started with us. We're excited. We're doing some really good things. He's going to be a great asset to the team. By the way, I don't know if you knew this. He's a reggae artist. Oh, I'm, I'm on it, man. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. I, I knew that before you. So we'll have to have like the SEO rapper battles the reggae SEO or. <laughs> it probably won't be a battle. It'll be more like a, 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 a compilation. That's you cool. know, a collab is what we call it. It'd collab. be a collab, yeah. That would be awesome. Um, so we met, uh, Steve and I chatted with uh, Terry Murphy, Murray, actually Murphy. He's over in the UK, great conversation. We're probably gonna be helping him out. Um, it, it went really well, so uh, a patoof punch in the face. He's a podcast listener. Gave us a great uh, uh, oral review. I was like, hey, what do you think of the podcast? Do you have any criticisms? He's like, man, I just, I like it the way it is. And so, patoof, the punch there in the face Terry. To uh, also, Timothy Bond, uh, I think he's hit us up before or whatever. I just wanted to give him another. Yeah, he, he hit us up on Twitter. So punch, so punch so. in the face. Oh yeah, he wrote a review and, and reminded us, and then I said, "Hey, yeah, we've actually read that one." So here we go. Uh, this Pushes. is a question. Gary Troy Miller, he is our romper room guy. You got to go back and listen to uh, to the podcast that to, to find that out. Oh, that was a long something. time ago. Yeah, I think it was in the one. 80s maybe uh so here we go it says hey guys this is it's romper room guy here again just listening to podcast 202 and the sound is two punches in the face quick good uh quick question if you're trying to index for a keyword in a certain area like houston texas for example you are a dentist you have to include the location in the keywords like dentist in houston texas or can i write content for dentist and google uh and google will index it based on my location uh, I remember in one of your podcasts you were saying that putting your location in the domain name is no longer necessary and can even be detrimental. So at the risk of sounding contradictory, I'm not sure that putting your location in your domain name would be detrimental. Um, I, th there are actually some ways you can utilize that to your advantage. And one of the ones that I know some of our clients have done is if you're really close to a, a, a kind of a smaller burg or city or something, uh, you can actually and you're so in this case there's a there's a, a, a town in the middle of Houston called Bel Air and there's a dentist who's right next to Bel Air and technically in Houston and their domain name is Bel Air Dentist and so they're able to take advantage of people searching for Bel Air Dentist and service those customers because they are so close and also place well for a Houston dentist in that area yeah. and so it's actually counterintuitive they're they're not just using the Houston, which is their location. They're actually using a, a little location next to them. I think you have to be you have to be keen in regards to what location you're targeting and how you're going to use that in your URL. Should you put that in your domain name? I probably wouldn't, right? Depending on your service area, especially in somewhere like Houston, uh, because and I'm not well. If it's a dentist, then 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 choosing a smaller area may work, like in the example he gave, because of you can find enough clientele within that area. But let's say your service uh, requires a, a little bit further outreach in order to build enough clientele, then you don't want to limit yourself to a specific town or, or location. And so in that case, putting Houston in the URL may not be the best thing to do. Definitely not in the domain name. Maybe you create a subset of pages uh, with pages that you're targeting and locations you're targeting. And then in that case, each one of those locations will end up in the URL anyway. And, um, and that would probably be the best way to target those. But as far as just adding Houston to your domain name for the sake of adding it, um, I, I'm not sure if that's going to reap the results you're looking for. Uh, and make sure, and, and so we're kind of hearing two things, because he also did ask about content, right? Mm -hmm. And so I would recommend, yeah, include Houston a little bit in your content. Definitely. Uh, Definitely. In the example that you gave. All right, so punch in the face, Gary, Mr. Yeah, Romper Room it in the guy. content, write about it. If that's your target area, then that's your target area. And so, yeah, write about it. It should come naturally. Frankly, yeah. if that's your target area, it should come naturally when writing that content. It shouldn't be, shouldn't be forced. Right. And right here, it seems like you're trying to, trying to insert it in in places everywhere possible to try to rank for that area when that uh, just may not be necessary. Right. All right, punch in the face, Gary. Thank you for the question, and keep, uh, keep listening and uh, keep reminding us of your romper room memories. <laughs> uh, next, we got Gareth Bate. 
He's with Garrett Bait Design. He says, sorry if this is the wrong place to ask a question. He sent it on our Contact Us form. That's fine. However, you yeah. can make contact with us. I'm a big fan of your podcast and have been listening for the last few months, including your previous podcast. The sound is way better now. And then he does an LOL. It's like, yeah. hey, we take that seriously. <laughs> There's nothing to laugh at. Loud, the buddy. improved quality of our podcast. Uh, all right, I have a question for you. I'm an artist and web designer in Toronto. I design a lot of websites for artists, which are straightforward portfolio sites. Mm -hmm. In the past, I put a lot of emphasis on keywords, page descriptions, and alt text because the websites usually have almost no writing on them. Mm -hmm. I'm not using WordPress. If Google devalues, uh, I'm not using WordPress. Yeah. If Google devalues these things now and focuses on social proof and written content, how do I get my clients to show up in listings if their websites are almost entirely artwork, images, pages, image pages? Any advice? Feel free to use this on the podcast. We are. Yeah, great. So first off, I got a, a, a question that I like some answers to. He mentioned that they, these pages lack content, but at the same time, um, he's using the emphasis on keywords, page descriptions, and alt text. I understand alt text references the image, but how much? What kind of page descriptions are you referring to? Maybe just a meta. And if that's the case, then you need some content. Yeah. <laughs> and so my suggestion to you would be uh, twofold. One, from an on-page perspective add some content even if it's a sentence or two about each one of those uh, um, art or um, art pieces that you're showing kind of like an e-com site right, right. e-com site is loaded with products and all these products have images and then there's a short product description you should give it a, a portrait description or an art piece description or whatever that is second thing I would do is, is turn up social right you're dealing with artists so you should be heavy on like Instagram Pinterest Facebook photos, things like that, uh, because they get indexed by Google and they rank well, and it'll make your images to be, you know, easy to share and easy to get fans and things like that. Um, so anytime you're dealing with an artist, I would turn up social and then give all your pieces some sort of description because as much as you don't want to do it, you need that content. And Gareth, I, I've got to, and Charles, I know is going to back me up on this at the end of the day. Uh, I I got to give you some bad news, artist promotion from a search engine optimization yeah. perspective is next to impossible. Yeah, it's um, really hard. The reason is, is what are they gonna search? Portrait, uh, like my wife is an artist and, and her tag phrase is explosion of tropical colors. If you search that, you will find her. <laughs> Absolutely, not a problem. But if you're just searching like bright, colorful paintings, you're going up against Macy's and yeah. J.C. Penney's, who maybe has their stuff together and is doing it white hat now. <laughs> <laughs> you're going up against you know all these people who sell art, these mammoth art people, mm -hmm. and then all the artists. Like how many times have you gone to an art festival and yeah. you know there's 300 artists who the only way to search for their art online would be similar terminology, mm -hmm. or or the only way to find them is by, by their, their name. name. Yeah. The way you would search for that particular thing might be portrait, or might be pencil drawing, or whatever. In that case, you might be able to nail nail down pencil drawing Houston, you know, pencil drawing portrait, pencil mm -hmm. drawing animal Houston. But other than that, you know, your the, you know promotion of art is a feet on the streets thing. Yeah. And I know it applies to your music, right? Yeah. Like anytime you're doing anything creative, really, whether it's art, whether it's music, um, yeah, whether it's, you could be a fashion designer, right? Um, it's going to require a different strategy in regards to online SEO. Uh, unfortunately, just has to be done, right? Because you need to be optimized. But don't count on it to bring in the type of result you're looking for. I think you have a better result uh, maximizing your efforts with social. Yeah, absolutely. At least at social, you can deal on a person-to-person -person basis with friends and followers and fans. On a on an SEO perspective, it's just kind of open to who's ever searching. And so, you know, I would use my energy there. So from a, from a helping your artist friends out and clients out, if they've got a tagline, first encourage them to have a tagline <laughs> yeah. that's easily remembered. And then just make sure that they place well for that. Because mm -hmm. they're, they're in reality, unless it's very unique art that people would describe, I don't know, um, obtuse cubic art. Made you know, out of whatever. Lead and, ma yeah, and made nanotubes. Or bullets <laughs> and nanotubes. <laughs> yeah. Then, you know, they can place well for the art form if they're very unique in doing it. But in general, you know, they're just not going to do well in general portrait and... I mean, even like, how do you find Ansel Adams? You don't, you don't look up, you know, portrait for my living room. Yeah. That, that's probably not how that's going to come up. So, um, so first off, Gareth, punch in the face, and uh, and good luck. We gotta wish you good luck. I'm just going to cover a couple pieces of news. Uh, I put uh, Windows 8.1. Uh, actually, Windows 8.1 is now available. 
the return of the start button. Thank you. What's funny about Windows 8.1 is that they released it prior to giving app developers a chance to code. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now it's breaking. So it's now they all well now now all of the app developers are behind the gun trying to get their apps ready for the for the launch. Yeah. I saw an article on getting rid of bloatware. Uh, you know that's all that when you buy a new computer, it's got all this junk software on yeah. it. Yeah. There is a software called Decrapifier. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Which we used to use uh, with our clients regularly. You buy an HP computer, you run Decrapifier, it uninstalls it all, all the crap. Stuff. Man. <laughs> yeah. uh, this was really cool. D There's that's a great name. Isn't like, it? I bought my wife an HP, and I still can't get no, half you're, you're of the HP stuff it. off It's there. actually free, too, like, or, or you, know, you donate it. It's free, free software. Um, and then donate you know, because you're like, thank God I thank didn't you. have to spend like four hours trying to get all that crap off. Um, this is really cool. In Australia, there's a company called Zokal, Z-O-O-K-A-L. They are delivering... Zokal? Zokal, or Zokal, yeah. They're delivering books with drones. So with they like do drone drones? Like drones, like mm -hmm. unmanned drones. There's the GPS, whatever. Yeah, like and can't be detected by radar drones. Drones. Okay. Isn't that cool? Kind yeah. of. I mean, a little nerve wracking, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah, drone S delivery your stuff textbook. is. Yeah. <laughs> now I think it's like two schools and okay. stuff, right? Two remote schools. So. Okay, well that makes sense then. Uh, we Come have on. a link on our Facebook page, so go check that out. facebookcom slash style. And it's got like windows through the ages. That's just good for nostalgia. Toyota recalls a vehicle. Their vehicles because of spider webs. Isn't that obvious? Yeah. yeah. Oh, a recall spider webs. Apparently, if they get into the vent and put a spider web in the right place, condensation will drip and then mess up your airbag, and your airbags can deploy. <laughs> wow. Uh, to do some, some pest control at the facility. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and finally, small claims court. Apple's in small claims court. They're in court all the time. This one is because people are unhappy that the new iOS was automatically installed on their device. <laughs> and so they're actually suing him. I don't. It's small claims, so it's under whatever, under five thousand dollars. People are some Apple users, man. <laughs> Frustrated for convenience. Finally, all right. That is the potatoes of our podcast. Time to get in the meat. We have exceeded the Geno time limit. Proudly, proudly exceeded the Geno <laughs> time limit. No problem. So today, um, I found an article. I was on Search Engine Watch. This one here is by Matt Morgan, titled uh, Seven Ways to Make Your Google Search Results Stand Out." It was interesting because we were just talking Sevo last week, and Sevo starts at the search result, right? That's, right? that's the first place people see you. That's the first opportunity they have to click, and so your opportunity to sell them starts then. So when I saw this article, I was like, okay, this will definitely tie into what we just, just spoke covered, about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but as I've been going through the article, what I realized quickly was that Matt, the tips he was giving to make your search results stand out um, directly tie into kind of standard SEO practices. So it makes sense to kind of go through the article and, um, and let's get started. So number one, he says, make sure you have unique and relevant page titles, which we all know is a must, right? Uh, uh, page titles are still a uh, um, very important factor in regards to SEO and algorithm ranking, and so you must have a great page title. The key here, he said, is make it unique and relevant. And so when, in regards to making your SERP stand out, I think it's key to understand what the searcher is looking for and making sure your page title uh, explains that that's what they'll find if they click. And so, so I want to encourage you not to rush with making page titles or, and don't default making your page title be, you know, whatever your, your content management system automatically makes the page title. Take some time and customize it. Make it unique. Make it relevant. Make it uh, resourceful for that user. Um, another thing about your page title, you want to keep it under 70 characters, right? He says 50 to 65, um, the max is 70, mm -hmm. and so I'll say keep it under 70. Uh, number two, don't need a cutoff word at the end of at the end of your SERP result. Yeah, right? don't leave a yeah, don't leave a cutoff word or a dot 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 or anything like that, because Google can and will if they have to replace that with um, with the page title or or an a search in the result heading. Um, that they feel is more suitable to what the user is looking for. Yeah. And if you can control it, control it. Uh, number two, search engine friendly URLs. We're just talking about this with our question. Um, yeah, don't, please don't use P question mark 
and jibber jabber, right? <laughs> <laughs> Change it to uh, 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 a permalink. Turn your permalinks on if you're using WordPress and give it something search engine friendly, something that usually should replicate the keyword that they were searching. Um, that yeah. helps for a couple reasons. Remember, he's talking about from an SEO perspective, that's just a keyword and right. URL, right? right? But from a from a, a CVO perspective, what's happening in the search results, that lets the visitor look and see that the page they're about to click on actually contains the information about what I the searched. The keywords they searched Definitely. For. So, so in that aspect there is worth having uh, uh, keyword rich URLs, search engine friendly URLs. Um, number three, enticing meta descriptions uh, with the call to action. Again, we're talking about the search engine result page. And so if you're searching and you see all of these listings, what I said earlier was that's the first time to sell them. So why not put your CTA in your in your meta description? Understanding that those meta descriptions is what's showing on that search results page. Yep. And so, you know, of course you want to explain your company and what they'll find on that page and then close it out with the call today because of some offer or contact us now because of this or that or, or whatever your call to action is. Uh, the meta description is a great place to, to start that selling process. In fact, like if the search term were emergency plumbing services, and they landed on your emergency plumbing services page, your meta description might say, have an emergency, call now, phone number. Yeah. Just keep it that simple. Maybe they don't even take them to your website. Yeah, because and if you can get that conversion from just the search, then, then more power to you. Then you must be listening to our podcast. <laughs> uh, so number four was um, Google authorship. Um, this one kind of goes without saying, right? Uh, your authorship must be set up. Studies show that um, um, listings that have an authorship avatar shown uh, increased the click through rate by over 30%. Yeah. And so you want to make sure that that man I would have thought it would be higher than that. I think that was industry based. Oh, okay. I think this industry based because especially in like a, a plumber, right. right? The chances of a plumber having authorship set up is minute. Right, right. And therefore it's click through rates probably skyrockets cuz right. you're the only one on the page with an authorship set up. Right. Meanwhile, you search SEO Houston, yeah. <laughs> right? And full of uh, you get a ton of tech savvy people. Yeah. Everybody has authorship set up and so our click through rate doesn't increase that much because of authorship. Um, so I think it's based on industry. At the end of the day, you need to have a setup. Yep. You need to make sure you have all of the links, all of the sites that you may or may not post content on. Um, listed there in your about section. Um, number five, Google local, right? <clears throat> Go claim your places, get it verified, upload your pictures, content, videos, you know, hours of operation and all of that good stuff. Um, just do it. This, yeah. this is like a no brainer. I will, he only put Google local. I'll say go get Bing local and Yahoo as well. Yep. Um, take advantage yeah. of those. And I also say this, that's not included. Um, make sure your nap is the same. Yep. Right. Well, anytime you're talking local, you have to think NAP. It's N-A-P. Your name, address, and phone. Make sure that they're consistent across the board. Um, so number six, personalize uh, annotations. And um, so this is kind of like, again, we're talking search engine results right. page. So this is kind of like uh, people seeing that, that Chris plus one on this page. Right. That's his personal annotation to me. If this was, let's say, Bing, Bing, you would see maybe who one of your Facebook friends liked this link before you clicked it. And so those personal annotations uh, definitely help and they increase click-throughs. Um, people are almost willing to click on something that somebody they know also used. Right. So do that. Uh, last one here is number seven, um, Google reviews. Uh, you know, we spent, you know, three minutes <laughs> in starting this podcast asking for reviews. Uh, that's for a reason. Uh, reviews are that important. What he didn't mention was uh, Yelp reviews. Uh, Yelp reviews are almost equally as important. Uh, frankly, if you do a Google search and they're showing reviews, they'll promote their reviews first and then the next options you have are Yelp. Yep. And then like City Search or Merchant Circle or something like that. And so, so yes, focus your energy on Google reviews, but understanding that users have to have a Gmail account or a Google account to do it. If they don't, don't hesitate to direct them to Yelp or Angie's List or City Search or wherever else that, that they can leave a review. Take advantage of it. Uh, so that was really it. Those are the seven steps to uh, make your Google search result stand out. Um, keep in mind, those work with just SEO too, right? Having a great meta description is great SEO practice. Right. Um, having, you know, authorship. Uh, authorship is a great SEO practice. Having search engine friendly URLs is a great SEO practice. Um, these things just also help with getting conversions. Yeah. So. Cool. 
Did you, uh, did you have any what? Or I know you had a little bit of news that you wanted to bring up. You want to call oh. it what? We'll throw it in the what. We'll I throw it in the what? What? <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> did you get it out the system? Go ahead. <laughs> now it's for time for what? <laughs> <laughs> so we got a couple of them. Actually, this one goes out to AdWords. First off, punch in the face to AdWords. I can actually appreciate this. Um, so they're adding through. We're just talking reviews. Now anybody's managing a pay-per-click campaign AdWords has added a new extension. So at first you could add calls as an extension or addresses. Um, now you can add, or you can even add your page names. Now you can add reviews as an extension. And they allow you to input the review source, um, a link to the review. And then once they approve it, then that review uh, link and a snippet of the review shows under your ad. Nah, I think that's nice. awesome. Yeah. This is another reason to really get your reviews up because if you're managing a paid account, you can use them there yep. and display them. The only d uh, fallback is that if you have in Google Offers as one of your extensions, then you can't use the reviews. Ah, okay. um, but anything else, then um, then you can use them together. Um, so that was cool. Another one was uh, Clout and Bing. So they partnered up, yeah. uh, Cloutership, if you want to call it that. But the whole purpose is to work similar to authorship. So if you have a clout profile and it's synced with your Bing account, then um, <clears throat> as people search for you and they find you on Bing, similar to Google showing your G Plus avatar, um, uh, Bing will show your clout avatar. Right. Um, Very cool. Yeah, I think it's cool. Great partnership for both parties. I think it'll work for them. It's also a little disappointing. Yeah, it's like, come on, Bing. Bing why don't you create keeps, your own? Bing just keeps doing what Google does, except yeah. not as well. Yeah, so... Uh, and the last one was, um, yeah, 40% of YouTube traffic is now mobile. That's huge. That's up 25% from this time last year. Yep. And so. A lot more people with, uh, with Wi-Fi set up at their house. Right? Yeah, this is at home. Good. I watch yeah. tons of videos on my phone at, at home. home. Wow, get this, watching TV. Yeah. <laughs> and so. Yep. Multitasking to the extreme. Yeah. All right, you have tuned in to the most popular SEO podcast on iTunes. This is podcast number 211211. Uh, we're the most popular because of you. Later, Nick. We're the most popular because of you. Thank you guys so much for tuning you, in. You, you, you over there. You, you about nine thousand downloads per week. Hey, uh, we're lacking on a Facebook page, so please go ahead and go out there and uh, and like us, follow us, all those, all that good stuff. Until the next podcast, my name's Chris Burris. Charles Lewis. Bye bye for now.